All right. So that's the beds cleaned up. Yeah, I've left the swell marks in it. But you can see all the rust has now gone. All the nasty sticky stuff is off and the deck and the beds are clear and I've dismantled the other guide bars there so that I can do this. So the object of the game wasn't to make it look pretty, which is why I've not bothered too much about the swell marks. The object of the game was to get rid of the corrosion and the layers and layers um, that have built up of sap and nasty stuff. And this will give us a good basis now to clean up these plates and get those done, which is my next job. All right. So that's the lead-in plates cleaned and the deck cleaned. Now we can start reassembly. Now this is what we pulled out of that lead-in deck. We had two of these, which two of these, which you can quite clearly see did not sit flush. And then two of these, which have seen better days. All right, so we're gonna replace that with four brand new ones, slotted screws. Because right, we like to add in as many different flavors as we can. Um, and we're gonna put those into these holes and see if we can get it all down flush. They're a machine thread. So they should, and they do, fit nicely. And I'm hoping they pull down. One of the things that was quite evident about this lead-in plate with the different types of screws in there, nothing was sitting flush. So it wasn't quite as good as, uh, uh, uh. I hope none of you are squeamish. Blood, sweat and tears. Well, we've had the tears, we've got the blood and we did the sweating earlier. Let's see if these will sit in here nicely and pull all three of these plates down and go below the level. Oh, well, there's no sitting up there. Look at that. Okay. Perfect. Right, let's get those screws done up to it. Now, one of the things that the owner wasn't very happy about was uh, that this was set up and the plate just by perhaps 0 0.5, 0 0.8 of a millimetre from one side to the other was raised. And now, because we've cleaned all that out, we've got that perfectly flush. So, Instead of looking at a rusty, horrible bed going through, we're nice and shiny all the way through now. So that's the bed done, and that's this guide back on here. We're going to put the guide on there. We're going to put the fixing plate back on there, and then we're going to put the lead-in table on, which goes here, a bit like the one at the back. And then we can get back into uh, in here, and this is no good. We're going to clean all these up. And where it's slightly damaged there, we're going to put a sharp bleeding edge back on these rollers. These rollers, they're a, bit, they're a bit like a hook. They should have a little bit of a sharp bleeding edge to grab the timber and pull it through from underneath. So we're going to fix these three rollers and uh, get the corrosion off and put those on and put this table on. And the sun's come out. Look at that. Amazing. Well, that's the leading table. And I've got the middle guide on. And there. 
Haven't put the front guide on yet because the front guide partially covers the block and this is what I'm working on next, the block and the drive wheels. So, uh, yeah, that's a vast improvement. Everything pretty much run through there. Flat and clean and it'll run a lot easier. Be less drag. You see this rubber wheel. This is what pulls it through at the back. And uh, it's quite clearly worn badly and it shouldn't be like that. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't be having this down so hard that it's worn like this to pull the timber through. And that will be to do with the corrosion and stuff that's no longer there. So this is the boring part that we would normally, I would normally film. Well, it ain't boring. I actually like doing this. So um, I'm sure in a, earlier in this video, I said about making cutters and uh, anyway, I ain't got that. But fortunately, this machine was left here, which is designed for cutting these flat blades at an angle. And you can see my table is adjustable here and up and down and uh, so I've got the blades out the bottom head and the top head and I've done the uh, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it but anyway we'll try it look at that glint so I've done the two originals these are the ones with the slots in for proper adjustment so I've put new faces on those Now the top ones, which are the replacement blades, even though I've started, you should be able to see the chips. There you go, look at that. The chips out of them. They must have been making a right mess of the last lot of boards that went through. Well, I've got to now grind them all the way down. See the chip? There. So I've got to grind them all the way down to remove all those chips and that end's broken as well. Uh, on the bases, that all the broken bits are one side. Oh yeah. That's because the boards are being run up against the, um, if you're from the front, the, this one, right hand side, and these are on the, the right. Can I swap them round? No, I don't think I can. Anyway, so the process is, this wheel here is vertical, this table adjusts. So what I do to get it close is I use an angle finder off of here to get it close to the wheel and also the machine is slightly offset to the slide so that it only sharpens on this last face if that makes sense because it's, it's round um, so then what I have to do is pass this backwards and forwards until it's no longer meeting and then do the other one and then we wind it up on these little adjusters here, which you can't see very well, and push it into the wheel. And the process is quite monotonous when these blades are damaged in the way they are. And I'm sitting on a wobbly chair that come out the skip, which is, anyway. So this is the process. You don't wanna, you don't wanna see what's underneath there. Two passes, oh for Christ's sake. I thought I had all this. I thought I had all this. No, I don't have it all sorted out, do I? Right. 
trying to wedge my gorilla pod. Well, I'll, I'll show you what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to wedge my gorilla pod in there. So anyway, so while we're here, these are the adjusters up, and these lock them off. And this is the adjuster to adjust the angle. And then you've got the flat wheel there, and it cuts on this edge. There's the camera. This side. that and then if I put you on the end there you can kind of see a bit better how it works anyway I was trying to wedge my gorilla pod in there to give it the angle because there's nothing at this end what's in here well, this is my tooling room. This is where all the tooling and blades, bandsaw blades, tooling for the moulders. It's it's basically my little my little room where I keep all my bits for machines, and also where I sit and do this, but. This is about as unprofessional or as hard work as you can get. Not, not going too well. Not when you've got to keep... Ah, that's a bit better. Right, so, basically, once you've done two passes on this, you can do another two, but it starts to get too hot to touch. So then I pick up the next one and do that, but this is cool enough now that I can do another pass. So you've got to go at a speed whereby it doesn't burn the tips of the blades. I mean that's coming nicely. That's a shame they were chipped because I just have to touch these up. But these are going to take quite some time. Probably 30, 45 minutes each because it's an old school way of doing it. It does it and it does it very well. But um, when you've got chips Blade like this. When you've got chips in a blade like that, you have to take a lot of material off, and um, it takes a long time. So, anyway, that's the process. We'll come back when they're sharpened. So, a uh, couple of hours later, and there's the cutter, and there's the image. And there's four like that, or four are sharp, clean, ready for reinstalling. Yeah. So it's always a challenge, is I've got to do it without gloves because I've got to feel what I'm doing. And um, it's hot and they're sharp enough to want to take skin from bone. So, um, yeah, that's that job. That's it for today. And then um, tomorrow we'll install them. Maybe it'll stop raining.